The Lord be with you. Good morning. I am Pastor Miguel Arenas, and I welcome you. I welcome you to this online worship service. We are so grateful that God has brought you to us online at this time. We have the confidence that God will bless us as we worship together. This morning, we will begin a new sermon series called Happy Birthday. Traditionally, we start the celebration of the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost. Today, the invitation is to begin now towards that celebration in the confidence that God is with us and will bless us greatly during this time together. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for our time of worship.
please join in our unison prayer. Holy God, you have gathered us together as your church, a body of believers who strive to be your heart and hands in the world today. May this time of worship inspire us to continue the work you have called us to do, and may it also challenge us to open our minds and our hearts to discern where you are leading us in this new day. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord. Amen. Hear these words of the early church from the book of Acts. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them, much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth be with you. Today I would like to begin this sermon having the following song. <laughs> Do you recognize it? The happy birthday song. This song is now known around the world and must be sung thousands of times every single day. This song was actually composed by Mildred Hill, a school teacher born in Louisville, Kentucky, on June 27, 1859. And along with her younger sister, Patty Smith Hill, who wrote the lyrics for the later version. But Patty first published this song on this day in 1893 as Good Morning to All. In the book, Song Stories for the Kindergarten, as a um, classroom greeting the teachers could sing to their students. The book was translated to French and German and Spanish and Chinese and Japanese and Swedish and, over, and had over probably 20 editions. And this song is still the icon for our birthday celebration. But why this song? Are we celebrating someone's, someone's birthday today? Well, not that I am aware of, but we are on our way 
to a big celebration, the day the church was born. We see this day as, and we know this day as Pentecost. So the invitation is to prepare ourselves for that great celebration. That is why our sermon series is called Happy Birthday. I don't know if you had celebrated your birthday in a Mexican restaurant. I have done it a couple of times. And you will see the restaurant crew going to the birthday person table with a cake and a candle singing happy birthday to you. But if you pay attention when the crew sings, they don't use the person's name. Still they sing. And they sing something like this. They say, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Panchito or Panchita, happy birthday to you. Panchito or Panchita, it will be a generic and no personalized name. You can be named Peter or John or Mary or Sarah, but you will always be Panchita or Panchito in this particular version of the song. Of course, there are practical reasons for not putting the actual name on this version of the song. First, because it is sung surprisingly, and the person's name is probably not known. Second, it is easier to sing a generic name than to pronounce a different one that probably can be difficult to pronounce in that particular time that this song is sung. But can you imagine the chaos that would be if we all had the same name? It would be complicated to recognize each other. Someone, someone would say Panchito or Panchita, and we will all turn our heads to see who is speaking to us. That is why we have all been given a name without any distinction. What's more, most of our, most of us have a Christian name and a middle name. Of course, if you are royalty, you will have several names to write. But that is not our case. A name identifies us personally. A name gives us belonging to a family. That is why we have last names too. This first and last name provide us with a place in society. Our name will accompany us for the rest of our life because this name is part of our identity. Our Bible text this morning speaks about identity. Peter and John are preaching in the temple of Jerusalem, but what they preach creates conflict for the temple religious authorities. These disciples preach the rising, the risen Christ. But the Sadducees, who were a religious sect, do not believe in the resurrection, nor do they believe in life after death. What a problem for these two disciples they had to preach and face a challenge. They are just beginning the church, and the church is in jeopardy already. Peter and John are sent to prison and then trial. But it is there, in facing these challenging moments, that they recognize their giving names. And Peter says to the court, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the death. So where does faith meet life? 
Friends, Easter Sunday was a beautiful opportunity to celebrate the resurrection of Christ for all of us. We shouted, we sung, and we greeted each other. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. But how much of that excitement ended that same Sunday? How many of us will be continue to remember the recent one by the name that Christ gave us when he was resurrected? To be called Christian is not something we should take lightly. By recognizing our name, we are all called to bear witness to who we are our identity in Christ, and our identity is Christ. As the Apostle Paul said, our identity is to recognize it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Our identity is to show the world what we say we are, Christians even knowing that the place where they were preaching was a hostile place to, place to preach, Peter and John did not stop doing it. Despite the challenging time they lived, they were able to recognize the name given by Christ and wear it with pride, with courage, with faith. A second point is that Peter and John represented the church that was just being formed. They were the product of those chosen by Jesus to be his disciples. They were called at first to be followers of Jesus through the ways of and the roads of Galilee and Judea and Samaria preaching the kingdom of God. They followed Jesus. They didn't have a leading role. But now that Jesus was gone and entered the Holy Spirit, they were in a learning process, the process of growth, but also in the process of adaptation and change to the challenging challenges of its times. How have we adapted to our times as a church in this time of pandemic? This is also our call today, and this means that the church is being confronted as never before with a decisive question. Will we Oh, we will not proclaim that message, not just in words, but in actions, not just in declarations, but in decisions. Many people wonder, when will, when will we return to normal? I ask them what normality is. Through the ages, the church has had to change and adapt to the new challenges of history. Today, we are like Peter and John facing the Sanhedrin of our society that does not believe that the church continues to grow despite this time of the pandemic. It is time for us to enter this new land of possibilities with hope and enthusiasm. Have you not realized how our church has changed during this pandemic? Give some thought to how our church has changed during this time. But don't see it negatively. Have Peter and John's vision to realize that the church maintains its identity, but in, the, in a different way. The pandemic 
was a wake up call like no other. The post quarantine era is an opportunity to make the necessary positive changes to move our church forward. What is your name? What is your name? I hope in Christ that it is the same that God named you and gave you when you gave your life to him. I hope it is the same name that you received in your holy baptism. I hope that our church continues to honor and glorify Christ in the same way that we did this Easter Sunday. Even knowing that times have changed and that our post-pandemic church will not be the same because we have learned something new. Now it is our call to discover it. May God guide us during this time of discernment to know how to respond to others when we are asked who we are. Amen. As we prepare to end our service today, let us remember that we not only have our individual names, we together also carry the name of Christ as we claim to be his followers and call ourselves Christian. This is more than just a label we put on ourselves. Proclaiming that we are a Christian means that we will do our best to live a life that is Christ-like. People around should know that we are a Christian by living a life that is an expression of God's peace, hope, joy, and love. So let us close this time of worship by joining our voices in song as we declare to the world that they will know we are Christians by our love. Now let us receive the benediction. Let us pray. Now 
let us go from this place into the world, knowing that God gave us a name, a name to honor and glorify, Jesus' name, by proclaiming his deeds and word and action. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.